Hi guys, Sean here from DigiDirect. Today we've got a very exciting video because we're taking a look at a new camera that's just been announced and that's the Panasonic GH5S. Now this is a new addition to the Panasonic GH lineup. It does not replace the GH5 and it has a lot of the similar features that are on the GH5 or in this GH5S as well. There's one major, major difference between the two though and that is low light performance. So low light performance is very important to a lot of videographers, uh, even more so than photographers because video has more restrictions on what shutter speeds you can use. Uh, and I think it's pretty hard to argue that the GH5 is one of the most fully featured non-pro level video camera available. But it's one area of weakness that some competitors uh, exceeded at is low light performance, which is why videographers who need a lot of low light performance typically look at the Sony A7S Mark II instead. So in the GH5S here, Panasonic is really specifically attempting to address that one weakness. We're gonna take a close look at that and run some tests on it and so on. Um, other than that feature, there's a couple other minor differences, but the majority of the, of the features on the GH5S are the same as on the GH5. I'm not gonna run through all of those features. If you want a breakdown of what's on both, you can watch my GH5 review. I'll put a link up in the corner here and also in the video description if you'd like to watch that. But let's start with a look at the body of the GH5S. So if you've seen the GH5 before, this is extremely similar. They've added a couple red accents here and there, most noticeably this uh, red record button. Like the GH5, it has a nice grip and a solid feel. The dials are really high quality. Uh, the joystick here is really great. It's got a fully articulating LCD screen, a super sharp 3.6 million dot viewfinder. It's a fully weather sealed camera and it has dual UHS-2 compatible SD card slots uses the same battery as the GH5 and it gets that same excellent battery performance that the GH5 is known for. And it also has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Now the first thing that Panasonic has done here to improve low light shooting is in the sensor. The GH5S has a 10.2 megapixel sensor. Now that's much lower resolution than the 20 megapixel sensor on the GH5. That may seem a little bit counterintuitive, but the reasoning here is that since each pixel, there's fewer of them, so each pixel is physically larger, which means it can gather mo more light and improve the low light performance. That's a very similar idea as to what Sony did on their A7S Mark II, their big acclaimed low light shooting machine. Um, that's a 12 megapixel full frame sensor, obviously much lower resolution than the other A7 cameras for the same reason. Now in the GH5S for video, uh, that's not gonna be a concern because video is much lower resolution than photos. 4K video is only equivalent to about an eight megapixel photo, so that's fine. For photos though, that's going to be limiting. So this is only gonna take 10 megapixel photos. That means this camera is really specifically meant for video, not so much for photos. Now the other thing that they've done here is they've added what's called dual native ISO technology. This is something from Panasonic's pro level Vericam lineup. And essentially the sensor has two circuitries running from it, one for regular shooting, and the other one is specifically for low light shooting. So when you get up to some of the higher ISOs, it's gonna switch over to the secondary circuitry, uh, giving you, or in theory, giving you better low light performance. Okay, but that's enough beating around the bush. Let's take a look at some of this actual low light performance. So I've set up a little test situation here. We're gonna compare the GH5S against the GH5 to see how much it improves on it. And we're also gonna compare it against the Sony A7S Mark II because that's kind of the gold standard in low light video performance. We'll start though with the GH5S versus the GH5. So we'll start off here at 1600 ISO. Both cameras are looking pretty good here, uh, but if you look at the white of the staples box, you can already see a little bit of noise in the GH5 uh, where that's absent in the GH5S. Bumping it up to 3200 ISO, we see that's a little bit more pronounced here, a bit more noise in the GH5. GH5S is still looking pretty clean here. Now we're gonna increase it to 6400 ISO. That trend continues again. While we can now see a tiny bit of noise in the GH5S here, it's still very light and controlled. And that's excellent, considering that we're already at 6400 ISO. This is probably near the top end of where you're actually gonna be shooting in a real world situation. So that's really excellent performance. Clearly better than the GH5 already. Increasing it to 12,800 ISO, this is a level that I've never actually had the need to shoot at in a real world situation. We can see the GH5 here is starting to break down quite a bit. The footage is looking grainy and quite soft. The GH5S still going strong though. There's a little bit of noise here, but it's definitely footage that I would consider to be usable, certainly. Now the GH5 uh, doesn't go any higher than this in terms of video, but the GH5S, we can increase that to ISO 25,600 definitely getting noisy now, but this is still probably borderline usable uh, in extreme situations. Finally, the max ISO here for the GH5S is 51,200. You're definitely not going to want to use this. The footage does break down quite a bit here. Um, although considering that we're at 51,000 ISO, I, you know, I would expect that, um, but it definitely does break down. 
So the GH5S here is clearly an improvement over the GH5, giving us usable footage up to about 12,800 ISO and even arguably about up to about 25,600. Uh, I would even say that the, the footage from the GH5S at 12,800 was cleaner than the GH5 was at 6,400. So really, really good performance here. Definitely an improvement. Now, let's compare it though against the Sony A7S Mark II because that's, as I mentioned, the gold standard and low light. Let's see how it fares here. So we've got the same test here. We'll start off at 1600 ISO again, where both cameras are performing quite well. Going up to 3200 ISO, we're still looking good on both cameras. No noticeably uh, big difference here. Bumping it up to 6400 ISO, and we start to see a little bit of noise creeping in here. Still well controlled in both, but to my eye, the GH5S is actually looking a little bit cleaner, especially in the white of the staples box here. At 12,800 ISO, that's even more pronounced, and I'd say the GH5S is pretty clearly outperforming the A7S Mark II, which is a huge statement, not something that I would have expected to see. Um, in fact, I actually had a number of colleagues look at this footage side by side without telling them which was which, and they unanimously picked the GH5S footage as looking cleaner than the A7S Mark II. Now at 25,600 ISO, we're definitely seeing the noise in both, although now that we're starting to hit these really high ISOs, the A7S Mark II is gonna start winning out again here, as you can see. Now at 51,200, the GH5 footage takes a big dip in quality here, while the A7S Mark II doesn't look too much different than it did at 25,600. That's where the GH5S tops out, but we can bump the A7S II up to 102,400. It even goes a little bit higher than this, but we're really starting to see a lot of noise at this point. So that was an extremely impressive result. The GH5S here went toe to toe with the A7S here up to about ISO 25,600. And like I said, I actually preferred the look of the footage from the GH5S throughout most of that range. And granted, the A7S Mark II did outperform it at 51,200 and above. But as I've mentioned, in real world, world situations, you're unlikely to be shooting over about 6,400 or 12,000 uh, 12,800 on a regular basis outside of extreme situations. So I think that the performance of the GH5S here is super, super admirable. Someone who's, you know, wants a GH5 or likes the feature set of it, but is a bit wary about low light, definitely this is gonna be a big fix for that. So there's a few other minor points here where the GH5S differs from the GH5, and I'll run through those quickly here. There's a number of features set up to support that low light shooting. It's got the same 225 point depth from defocus autofocus system as the GH5, but that AF system is now accurate up to negative five EV, which is gonna give you good AF performance even in, in these very dark situations. There's a feature called Live Boost where when you're looking at the, the footage on the back of the screen, it can electronically brighten it and it also increases the magnification zoom ratio to 20 times so that you can use manual focus to look, see what you're shooting and focus on it in low light a little bit easier. There's even a new night mode which gives the LCD and viewfinder a red cast so if you're in a dark environment, you're not going to ruin your night vision by looking down at the, through the viewfinder at the LCD because red light doesn't ruin your night vision the same way that you know, white light does. Now outside of the low light side of things, uh, the GH5S can shoot 1080p slow motion footage at up to 240 frames per second. The GH5 topped out at 180 frames per second. Like the GH5, it can also record 10-bit 422 footage at up to 400 megabytes per second. But the GH5S now can also record 10-bit internally while it's also exporting 10-bit externally like to a recorder unit at the same time. You can also do 4K 60 frames per second like the GH5, but you can now do that in cinema 4K as well as ultra HD. These are just slightly different aspect ratios of 4K. The GH5 could only do 4K 60 in UHD, ultra HD. The GH5S has time code like the GH5, but now that you can also send that time code in or out of the camera via the flash sync cable and a coaxial cable for BNC that comes in the box. That's really good for studio situations if you wanna sync some time code with other units. Now there is one area where the GH5 is superior to the GH5S and that's in Panasonic's 4K photo mode where it takes 4K video and you can pull stills from that to use as photos. In the GH5, it's actually 6K photos, so the stills are higher resolution. In the GH5S, because the sensor resolution is lower, that maxes out at 4K photos. So the stills you can pull from that are only eight megapixel as opposed to uh, a little bit higher in the GH5. Considering the market for this camera, I don't think that's a big deal. The GH5S also comes with the Panasonic's Vlog flat picture profile built into the camera. That's something that is a separate purchase if you're getting the GH5, and it costs about $149 Australian. So the GH5S is overall very similar to the GH5, but that improvement in low light performance is really spectacular. I, I think that if you were you know, interested in the GH5 because you like the feature set, but you were a little wary about the low light, the GH5S is an excellent solution to that. Um, in my opinion, other than low light, the GH5 was already the best uh, camera out there for the dedicated videographer. So I think by addressing this you know, major weakness of the camera, 
Panasonic has been really smart, showing an awareness of their products and their weaknesses that I think other camera manufacturers could learn from. So I applaud them for that, definitely. So the GH5S is due out in February 2018. It's going to be about $500 more than the GH5. Um, you can pre-order it on our website at www.digidirect.com.au or you can do that in one of our stores as well. If you're watching this video after 2018, uh, February 2018, you can come into one of our stores and give it a test and uh, give it a play. We've got stores in the Sydney CBD, Bondi Junction, Miranda, Chatswood, the Brisbane and Melbourne CBD, and Cannington, Western Australia. Thanks, guys. Take care.